Okay, well, welcome. My name is Brian Kwong. I'm the host of Kickstarter Rockstars. A case study is all about teaching you how to raise the funds you need to kickstart something that you're passionate about for um, entrepreneurs, startups, and small businesses. And this is episode number eight, and our guest today is Eric Mann. And thank you so much for being with us, Eric. Absolutely, my pleasure. Cool. So, so tell us a little bit about, about yourself, Eric. What do you do, and um, how did you get started with Kickstarter? Yeah, so I am, I'm a high school teacher in northern Idaho. I just recently graduated from college, which is when I, uh, with a friend, did my first Kickstarter project, uh, which was the first time I ran Bendy through Kickstarter. I uh, just recently started teaching high school, teaching technology education where I went to high school, uh, which is fun, and I, I absolutely love it. Cool. Okay, so you, okay, so how many projects have you started so far? I started... Uh, I had three that went through previously to the two I have going now, so I've had a total of five. Uh, the The first project I had um, is also going for its second time through funding. So, so four different products, um, five total projects. Four different products, five different projects, and the first three didn't go through. And, Correct. And recently, you just successfully funded your project, one of your project. Yes. Awesome. And 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 then the the two active one one of them is you relaunched basically right right the the first project when I launched it the first time I launched it with a friend of mine uh, about a year ago actually almost to date um, and we needed we, we set a goal of about twenty thousand dollars for that original manufacturing run um, spent kind of a year reviewing the product testing it out some more I sold a few to some individual people to kind of get to get feedback. Yeah. And have been able to come back um, and produce it in a first run quite a bit cheaper than the first time around. I see. I see. You're talking about the Bendy, right? Yes, Bendy. Okay. Okay. Great. So, so what did you learn? I'm very interested about you know five projects. That's a lot of projects, and also you're running two projects at the same time. That's yes. I I actually don't mad. Know. It's mad. <laughs> don't know anybody's doing that. I mean, most people just do like one project and they already like you know. It's 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 going it's a chaos already, right? Right. Yes. <laughs> so so let, before we go into your your currently two projects and one of them's already successfully funded and the second one's almost funded, right? So I wanna I wanna learn a little bit about okay, what did you learn in those first three times that didn't yeah. work? What what did you learn from those those projects? So so the first time around, um, again it was about a year ago. A friend of mine and I were coming up with an idea for a, a mobile iPad stand, an iPad stand that would work. Uh, in any case, any situation, you know, it wasn't, it didn't sit on a desk, it didn't stand three feet in the air, it would do both and it would be wherever you wanted it to be. Uh, we went through a lot of different options for how we would get funding to go through an original manufacturing run. We ended up with Kickstarter. Uh, at that time, I had just heard about Kickstarter for six months or so before that. Um, it wasn't kind of the, the booming internet phenomenon that it is this year. That it, I mean, it's just been amazing. They had the, the elevation dock, almost $2 million in funding. It's just, it's crazy what it's become. But it wasn't kind of the de facto option for funding. Um, yeah. We went through with Bendy. It was, uh, we set a goal of $20,000, which was, it was a high goal for kind of the, the average um, funding for something like that. Yeah. And I learned pretty quickly that it was a high amount for such a specific product. Not a lot of people, and, and um, if you look at the the, the market of, of kind of flexible or, or mobility stands for the iPad, yeah. it isn't huge. You know, there's a lot of people who want a, a dock, something to sit on a desk. Yeah. There's a lot of people who want it to work in a car. Um, but as I showed, and I talked to I, I talked people about Bendy, and they wouldn't necessarily see the benefit until they used it. And as soon as they used it, they realized they had to have one. Yeah. So what I learned from that project specifically was that I needed to find a way to get it out to a bunch of people cheaper, so that people could see it, they could see what it did, they would tell their friends about it, and and that would be my angle to get into that market instead of the first run, which was um, a bigger funding goal with a little bit cheaper price. Um, and it was actually a different manufacturing process the first time around. So that's the lessons you learned from um, that first one. Okay, how about the second one? The other two. Other two. I took a stab at designing two different uh, dog beds, um, dog feeding and water stations along with dog beds. And I, I have those uh, here. Some people around town have, have had a chance to use those. And it was kind of my venture into almost 
furniture, if I can go that far as to say it. Yeah. Um, and, and, and the first one didn't, didn't make it. The second one I actually I, I canceled before funding was up. And talking to people who had gone the pet route, you can probably hear my dogs around me. They're all chewing on bones. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're definitely part of the family. But yeah. um, pet products on Kickstarter have, have had a tough time. And I don't know why. I, I don't know if people are on Kickstarter, you know, because it's not just product design. There's the the arts and, and, and video, and it's all on here as well. Yeah. I just found out and I learned that currently there's not a huge audience for pet products on Kickstarter, whether they're beds or uh, training systems or monitoring systems. They're just, there is not that big of an audience on Kickstarter for pet products. So that was both of the uh, product number two and product number three for me were both oriented around around dogs or pets. And there just wasn't a ton of interest, unfortunately. Okay, all right. So first of all, why why did you decide to, to launch two live two projects at the same time? Yes, I'm just get this um, out of the way first. <laughs> I am not a person to get discouraged very easily, and uh, I suppose that could be a, uh, a weakness <laughs> in the sense that I I don't usually take no for an answer. Um, I launched Zenfire first. Uh, before Bendy round two. Okay. The reason I launched Zenfire at this time of the year is it's a product that is made to be used during the summer. Um, okay. it, it's a, if you haven't seen the project yet, it's yeah. uh, a sand fire garden for your garden, for anyone who hasn't, hasn't had a chance to see that. And so it's meant to be yeah. used during the summer. Okay. Uh, launching it now, getting the funding going now, allows me to get that product to people by the beginning of summer. I see. And I think that is really important. Yeah. Now, I just recently had kind of a a breakthrough in how I can go and make some of the components for Bendy and I decided it was time to give that a second round. Again, the time of the year, Apple just today releasing their iPad 3, the hype for iPad is up again. And so I thought that, I that in in kind of the, the near future when I launch Bendy, uh, we're just about to the halfway point with funding and about $400 off of our goal. Yeah. So it's hopefully this time of the year with, with the iPad 3 launching or the new iPad launching, um, well, <laughs> whatever, whatever it whatever is, it is. Uh, it's a new one. Will help more people, you know, search for iPad on Kickstarter and and get them to Bendy. I got it. I mean, that's that that makes sense. With yes. The season and and the event, you timing those uh, for your launch for your product. Right. Launch. It's not just insanity. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good. Okay. Now that's clear. So so learning. So so okay. Um, so from what you learned from those three projects, what so what was your mindset about going into these these two projects? Okay, right, so I, I I decided right away that I needed to have a low kind of entry point, a low goal. Um, people are they they are a little hesitant to back a project right away that has a goal of twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. Now once they see the momentum is there, obviously there's not not a big problem, but the the that first getting over the hump when you have a big project and, and someone is going to be the one who looks at that project and sees zero pledged out of twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars and that's discouraging. Yeah. So my my thought was that I needed to have a goal that was reachable. Uh, yeah. That goal for me is a point at which I can make the parts in Zenfire's case, um, make the, the copper coil, get the parts in ordered to a price where people can afford it. Yeah. Um, you know, sell them one by one, it cost me a hundred bucks just to make them. But if I can sell you know, a minimum order of two thousand dollars, I can get that price down to a sixty-five dollar price point. So, in in Zenfire's case, we over doubled our two thousand dollar goal. We're up around fifty-five hundred dollars, I believe, right now, um, which which is nowhere near the you know some of the best funded of all time. But it's a success for me, and and it, it validates what I love to do. Um, it it makes my wife feel okay that I spend money on on prototyping and and product discovery. So uh, that works well. Um, but I, my mindset was that I needed to allow an entry point where people could feel like they can pledge and their product project's going to go through. Um, and, and again, I also wanted to make sure that I timed the two projects to where people, you know, the iPad is being announced and some are right around the corner. People start buying uh, patio furniture, yard, yeah. landscaping. They start, those projects start coming to mind. And so if I can have kind of a, a promise to deliver by summer for one of those projects. I thought that would be a, another bonus to an extra extra funding. Okay, so let's let's talk. So we, we basically we're talking about everything you need to do before you launch the project. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so 
So I, I'm very curious about how did you uh, go go about doing uh, putting up putting together a prototype. Actually, before we do that, let's, let's talk about the idea first. How did you come up with the idea? So I'll I'll do Bendy first. Yeah, um, do Bendy first, Bendy, and then the Zen it, it was it was kind of a Zen moment. Um, and I and I don't like I don't use the word Zen very much. I know a Zen fire, in the, but no, it, it was a kind of a Zen moment. I was driving to the Apple Store, which is two hours away, um, and I had my my first iPad. iPad one, and I was going actually driving to stand in line for iPad two, um, and I wanted a way to put my iPad in the position where I could use it as a music player. Yeah. Uh, use it as a, a navigation system. At the time, I didn't have a navigation system in my car. It was just your car, and you have to hold your iPad. And so I thought it'd be kind of, it's silly. I have this nice, you know, nine-inch display that's sitting on the seat next to me that I, I really can't use safely on the road. And I thought, well, it'd be, we should do some sort of an arm, something that can hold this wherever I need it. I can take it, and I can push it out of the way um, when I don't need it anymore, when I'm, when I'm not uh, in need of it. And I went back and I, I talked to a friend of mine who I went to college with, who we'd been friends, you know, all the way through high school. And I said, I need someone to do this with. I'm not, doing it on my own is a lot. I'm taking full credits, need someone else to help me. So we we did a lot of prototyping. Our first idea for Bendy actually did not use a suction cup at all. It was some, as a clamping system. Okay. And my requirements with Bendy was that you didn't have to have a certain case on it. You know, all of the iPad. All the iPad stands I've ever seen um, that actually hold it up, you have to have a specific case or it only it doesn't move, it only works in one situation. Yeah. And so with Bendy, I said we have to have a way that you can put an iPad or a, if, if you have an Android tablet, you can put that in there as well. Got it. Um, and it was, it was a moment, we actually were testing suction cups to stick the base of it onto a window so you could actually stick it onto the window and then use it. And I thought to myself, this would be a great method to design a suction cup that would just hold the iPad itself. Yeah. Uh, and as soon as I flipped Bendy upside down, actually, and stuck the iPad where it was, the window was supposed to be, we said, this this is where we have to go. This is what we're doing. So we ordered some parts. We made some prototypes. Uh, all of us took it home, tested it for a while, and decided that this was exactly what we had to do. So this is the, you, you're referring to the, the um, second method that that's um, cutting down the, that, the manufacturer cost. It, the, the way it's put, the Bendy in its kind of final product is exactly the same. It was the process along the way that changed. Uh, the first way we were going to have to do this was um, getting all the molds done custom to create this individual suction cup as, as well as build in one of the features, the, yeah. the, the orange threads. Um, and that was going to be one of the most expensive parts. Um, I, I found a, a company who can actually get that done for us at just a fraction of the cost. Um, as before, so instead of needing to place an order just with that one company of ten thousand dollars, I can place an order with the one company for about fifteen hundred dollars. So, um, wow, we so it was a big difference. How about the quality difference? There need have you? It's actually need, better. Um, get, the, the first the first model, it, it if you tapped on it really hard, um, did a lot of typing, it would it would give a little bit of a wobble to it. As any if you've ever used any sort of like a flex lamp. Yeah, yeah. Um, you had that, and and the bendy arm itself was incredibly strong. It, it's very flexible, but it, it doesn't shake. It was actually the suction cup that was kind of vibrating. And what we were able to do is anchor the quarter inch mount further in to the suction cup so that it doesn't vibrate. Unless you're just a you know thump typer, um, you're not really going to get any sort of wobble on bendy this time around. So it's it's a better a better product and a lower en entry price. So so okay, let's just step back a little bit, a little bit, okay. Because yeah. I'm interested in creating my product too, so I'm really interested in, okay, okay, you had the idea of Bendy. Yes. You, okay, it has to be a suction, something that's sucking on the on the iPad, right, and, and the arm, right? So did you just go to Home Depot to buy some stuff to start trying, or what did you do? That, that, that was very close to, well, our, our first time around, um, I, I'm, I, I know CAD, I, I do SolidWorks. Um, I am no, by no means a, a CAD genius. Uh, our first idea for a clamp, we actually got two prototypes printed up um, by, by Shapeways, the company Shapeways, um, and we tested them. We we used them, and it just it was a little too cumbersome. You had to actually kind of close a clamp every time you wanted to put the iPad in, and it it wasn't bad for long kind of use if you wanted to you maybe sit down on the couch for an hour and a half. But if you wanted to sit at your desk for ten, you know, five five minutes, it was you know a ten second process to get it on. It just didn't seem right. So, yeah. 
we, we scratched that prototype. One of the biggest pointers I could give anyone who's starting a Kickstarter project is don't set a deadline for when you want to be on Kickstarter. Yeah. We did that the first time around. We, we started the project, I think it was, uh, I, I don't know when we started, yeah. the date was. We, we said, we want to be on Kickstarter, let's say, uh, March 1st. And, yeah. and as it got closer and closer, we realized that that wasn't going to happen. And yeah. we, we bumped back our deadline. But keep in mind that your, your idea, your original idea, my original idea, the clamp, turned out to be not the best way to do it. So we started from square one. Um, and we almost did kind of go to Home Depot and, and buy some suction cups. There was, there was a company online um, who, who we worked with who provided us with a lot of different kind of pre-made models so we could test out what shape we want, um, what kind of mold we want in it. What, what kind of material we want. So you, you mean you just Google, like you type in. Absolutely. I, I, I want suction exactly cups, kind of like, did. that's what you did. And, and I, I had probably 10 different companies send samples of what they had. Uh, we knew we were going to have to redesign it for the use, but we wanted to get, you know, angle, material, all that information. There was no reason we needed to make 15 different shaped suction cups to figure out which one held the iPad the best. And we actually used the same uh, angle of indent and material as Apple actually provides to their um, genius, their techs, when they take the glass off the front of the IMAX. Um, we went with that same kind of shape because it held for so long. I mean, we, we would stick a, an iPad on, on Bendy and come back a day or two later um, and it would still be there. In suction cups, you always worry, are they going to fall off? <laughs> I, I always tell people, I say, don't hold it over a surface higher than you'd want to drop it because it, it can happen. And there, there's no no suction cup in the world. You're going to avoid that. But this suction cup, it blew us away how well it held and how easy it was to get off. Um, but, yeah, we just we uh, we went and we bought and we looked. <laughs> so you so let me just give it back to you. So you search Google and then, mm -hmm. and then you came up with maybe 10 different companies with different kind of cups and you asked you emailed them and asked them for samples and they sent it to you and then you tested them out yes That's yeah so our, our our very very first prototype of bendy um we took an arm that we had custom made for us um with a clamp that we had from custom who? from from shape uh, what you call it from where which no, which no. This was this was a different company. Different company. Uh, different company. Just a little little work uh, for us. But we we had an arm that was made for for us at the time, and then we took that arm, and we held it up onto the suction cup, and we put bendy on there and moved it around, and, or put put the iPad on there, and we figured we have to figure out a way to join these two. Um, originally, the the idea to do quarter inch threads didn't even go across our mind, but we realized that. Um, putting a camera on the top of this is also just, it's amazing. And you can, you can position a camera at literally any angle you want and it, it's secured by that quarter inch. Mount. So how did you get the custom arm done? Uh, we contacted the company. Uh, we told them exactly what we wanted. I gave them the specifications, how much it needs to hold. Um, I, I used a, a tension a gauge to figure out exactly when, when the arm is standing up, how much you, we want you to have to move it. Yeah. How much okay. Sure. Some arms you have to really go. Other arms just kind of flail. And for a little chunk of change, <laughs> they they gave us an arm that met those requirements. And and these are all U.S. companies, or they are every single Bendy, uh, every product that I will ever do will always be manufactured. I mean, it, it's all it's all local. Um, one of the often products like this go overseas to Japan or China, um, which I don't have any problem with that. My cost was those first prototypes, believe it or not, they're really expensive to have stuff shipped from overseas. Yeah. So when you're just starting a kind of a prototype project and you're in high, or high school, I teach high school, when you're in college um, and some of the suction cups we wanted to have from, a, there was a company in China who had a bunch of suction cups we wanted to test out. Yeah. Uh, the freight to get them to us was $112 just yeah. for these, you know, a sample. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I felt good kind of supporting our local economy here as well. So cool. Okay. So, so you got, the, so I, I just kind of, I want to like, you know, very clear lay it out, right? So you call a, a company to, to do a custom arm. Basically you mm -hmm. tell them exactly what you want, what they want to do. And then cups, which we talked about earlier. And then you, how do you figure out how to put it together? So we, then we, I know we wanted a quarter inch thread. That's what we decided on. We wanted a quarter inch thread. Uh, so we had to have two parts. We had to have the male 
part put onto the arm and the female part put onto the suction cup. Uh, at that point, I went to different companies that would do you know injection molding into the, make the suction cup for us with a custom device to hold the female thread. And I asked, you know, how much how much is this going to cost? Um, and the way they were going to do it in the first place was do it all at one step. And and the second way we're doing it is actually in two different processes. They actually make the cup and then they create the hole for it. It's a punch in is what it is. They they actually take the female thread and they insert it into the suction cup. Yeah. Um, and at that point we, I mean, uh, that's what you do. That's what we that's did. What, that's what happened. Uh, okay. So yeah. this is just a prototype, right? You, we're still talking about a prototype. Yes. So yes. how much did it cost for you to, to put this thing together for just a prototype? Um, the first Bendy prototype that we did that was kind of a fully functional, took it home and tested, it was probably in the range of 175 to $225. It, it wasn't, um, it wasn't too bad. Now the, and that, that's, that's for the suction cup and kind of the hardware. Yeah. Um, as, and that was, as soon as we had the custom arm made, uh, then it, then it goes up and you, you were paying about $200 to have a one run of the custom arm made, so okay, got it. So about three, four hundred bucks for this. That or? was that was the first cost. Now, one of the reasons the first time we went for that twenty thousand dollar goal is once we get up to purchasing, you know, like anything, you purchase in quantity. Yeah. That that price drops down to a point where we can offer Bendy, you know, for for fifty five dollars. Yeah. So so okay. So after you okay, you got okay. You got the prototype working. You got a working prototype. You guys like it. Okay, this thing rocks, right? So the next thing that you guys got to do is find a manufacturer. Yes. To to, to make that happen, right? So the yes. first company that you you went to, quote you you guys need to pay twenty something dollars, like to the minimum order or something like that. What? Right. So so between getting um, with everything, because we we have to when you go on Kickstarter, one of the the things that I didn't think about until we were putting the project in was that we have to take into consideration packaging. We want it to have good packaging. We don't want to just, you know, ship it in a, ship put it in a shipping bag and send it go. Yeah. Um, so we have to look at creating packaging. Um, we have yeah. to look at what shipping is going to cost. All these different components have to figure into that. So once we have a prototype, we figured out uh, kind of a manufacturer. In our case, we kind of knew who we were going to go with. And the $20,000 mark, the first go around, was the point at which we could purchase, we could place a big enough order with the company. To, sorry, I just shook my computer. A big enough order with the company yeah. to uh, get the price down, and that we can also afford to ship them for a low cost. The second time around, that whole price is in, in quarter. We can place a much smaller order for these parts and get them out to people a lot cheaper. Just because you went to a different company? Different company, a different method of going about it. Um, I wanted to address the issue of the slight wobble for the second time around. And just kind of by luck, when I when I when I called up the people who who were going to be doing it, they said well, we can we can do it this other method that would actually provide better structure and cheaper. So I don't know why we didn't go that way the first time around, um, but it was definitely helped us to get uh, a much lower pledge. So the so second company gave you advice. Yes. So how how do you find these companies? You just also type in Google and I got online. Um, it's amazing when you call up a company. Um, we, we here in Idaho have what's called the Idaho Inventors Association. Um, it, it's run by um, just some brilliant minds in, here in Idaho. Um, and they're, they're kind of a good jumping off point. Unfortunately, I didn't know about them at this time. Uh, I just recently kind of became involved. But no, when you, when you call a company, it's kind of, you don't know what to say. And I didn't know what to say. And I, I asked them, I said, here's what I need to do. Um, what should I do? How should I do this? I, I'm yeah. not an expert. You're the expert. Yeah. Um, I want to do something that really hasn't been done. And, and that's when they can say, uh, we can do it. And if they can't, often they're really open to referring you to other people in the industry that they know might have the equipment to do it. I see. I see. So you just, okay, got it. You just basically research on a bunch of companies. You just call them and ask them yes. and see, if, can you do it? Yes. No. If not, they refer you to somebody. Exactly. Okay, great. So I, I know that's a lot of question about the the prototyping because, yeah. but but you know, for anybody, it's sometimes who, it's the important part. It really is. It is. I mean, for for anybody who wants to um, create a product, you know, that's like the most important thing. You got to prototype, make sure it works, and yep. and manufacture before you even start. And you can't you can't start a project right. without getting these information. Absolutely not. All right. So so okay. So that's that's the bendy. How about the Senvire? How do you so make Zenfire that? It was 
<laughs> it was almost an accident. I I uh, I was looking for a, a yard improvement. We just we moved to a new house um, when when I started teaching, and I wanted to add something to the yard. I didn't know quite what I wanted to add, and I was just I was thinking about what we have and and what what um, our area is, and went to actually uh, Home Depot, mm-hmm. and walked the aisles for a couple days, and and I I just just thought. What what could I do? And then I, I I want to do something with fire, and that turned into very quickly, you know, running propane up through fire. Uh, propane it's very it's a cheap gas. It's everyone has it. It's in every town. You probably have it on your barbecue. Um, yeah. it, it's not anything that's hard to get a hold of. Running it up through through sand, and and igniting it, and it creates just this. Um, it's unbelievable. I had someone on the Kickstarter project uh, send me an email that said, I have worked in propane for 20 years, and there's no way that's propane coming up through that sand. And I told them, I said, across my heart, it is, it's, it's unbelievable, but it is propane. Um, and it's actually a totally different uh, product because the, each of the pieces will be purchased from individual companies. Um, and then the one kind of custom part is creating that bowl that can have an adapter and a custom mm-hmm. coil, a custom mm-hmm. copper coil, mm-hmm. to then distribute that propane evenly through the through the. How do you learn how to know how how do you put this thing together? Like, can you walk me through how the? How, how <laughs> um, I, I definitely can. It's it's uh, my, my wife always she asked me you know where do, where did you figure this out? What did yeah, you? I Believe it or not, I'm a very organized person. I, I am very picky about things being in their place, but I my mind is not. I, I always am I have just random ideas and I would say ninety percent of them are, are are bad, but they keep me, you know, active. Um so the the process for doing this, uh, uh yeah, yeah. Did you want to know the, the process for creating the prototype or or the process for doing the final product? The prototype. Because okay. that's that's I, I'm really interested in prototyping because that's that's really where to get it all so, started. Yeah. you know, absolutely. Where so goes, so. I, uh, I went out and I, I looked through a bunch of different dishes. I looked at, at woks. I looked at different sort of uh, gold panning dishes, um, and I was just trying to find something that would be simple but you know big enough. Um, the the bit dish that you see in the in the product it's very identical to the final one that will be included in you there are very few aesthetic differences uh, I went back to to the shop to my shop here in in the house all, all done in-house um, and I machined out a hole in the bottom I got a tube of copper I wrapped it around a pipe bender a certain diameter bent it two or three times uh, went over to the CNC machine, drilled about six or seven holes just in the right spot, just the right size, fitted it all together, uh, machined out a little custom adapter to fit onto the to the copper pipe, hooked it up to a propane regulator, poured some sand over the top, and lit it up. And that was the first that was the first go. Um, and and in all honesty, it's not it's not changed much from that. A couple pieces are different, and and they'll be finalized as as the final product comes out. But um, no, it's just, it's so simple that when it comes to you, it's actually in, in f- different, it's a kit that you actually put together. And uh, you just, you take the copper coil and you set it inside of the dish. Yeah. You'll have a bag of, of Zen sand and you'll pour that over the top. You connect up the the tube that's included, the yeah. propane, and you're good. To go. and, and it's just really wow. easy putting the right things together in the right order. So you basically, you hand, you this prototype, you actually put it together, kind of like you hammered it out together. Yes, it's yes, very, stuff. kind of a rough, rough go at it. Okay, go, and then, okay, I got that. So now after you figured out, okay, this worked, it looks good, it's 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 pretty cool. Okay, now you gotta do manufacture, so what what do you do? How do you manufacture so, that perhaps, package that you just talked yes. about? Yes, uh, the, the, the Zenfire product, um, our, our current, goal um, is to deliver it in kind of a a kit box. So you open up a box and you have different different compartments and there's a compartment that's step one and step two. Yeah. So what we have to do is get all these products together to an assembler and to a distributor. And what that distributor does is they, they assemble them, they put them in the box, they put all the things together so that when you when it comes to your door, you open it up and you just see step one, take this dish out, set it over here. Yeah. Step two, 
take this coil out, put it in this position. Um, and, and that's the, the, the biggest manufacturing part of this whole kind of project is having uh, the, the same company that creates the copper coil. Yeah. Um, I could do them all by hand, but that would be daunting, um, just getting all the holes right. So the company that does the copper coil, getting them to uh, get that to the distributor is our, is our manufacturing challenge. And, and when, copper is actually at a, at a high cost right now. Um, and, and getting someone who works in copper is actually is kind of challenging. So, so you found a company who to custom can customize that part. That part. We haven't decided the final company yet. Okay. Um, we have people who can do it, um, and and we have quotes from people that make it affordable for us. Got Our it. as as funding closes and as we figure out one of the challenges is you don't know how big your order is going to be. Yeah. Uh, for Zen Fire, with, a, with smaller projects, a two thousand dollar order is much different than a five thousand dollar order. Yeah, and so uh, it was. It took. A, I'm waiting to see the final amount till I decide which company to go through and which method. Yeah, um, but but that's yeah. It, it's it's quite an experience as as pledges go on. Your plan changes um, as, as yeah. time goes on. So. I, I heard that from different um, successful project creators. You know, yes. sometimes sometimes they can't handle it with what they originally planned. Yeah. Well, one I I I'm, I'm an active backer on Kickstarter as well, and, and not just a, a a creator. And one of the projects I backed has gone through so many. It was the um, the pen type A. Um, yeah, yeah, like I know CW. that one. Yeah. And uh, I just remember as the, the as the project went on, and as they went from ask, I think they asked something like ten or twenty thousand dollars, and they they ended up with over two hundred thousand. And as as time went on, we would get updates. You know. As their plans change for manufacturing, because it went, uh, they have a quarter of a million dollars now instead of you know twenty or thirty thousand. So, and obviously that's not my case. But as as time goes on, plans do change. Yeah. Um, something like Zenfire, I have a very you know very concrete goal set of getting this out by summer. And summer in some regions is earlier than summer here in Idaho, which really yeah. starts in July. So. Yeah. Wow, that's very interesting. Thank you for sharing that that prototype and manufacturer process um, with us. Let me let me think. If, let's see. Let's see if there's anything that 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 I'm, I don't think that is there. Did I miss anything about prototype and also a manufacturer? Anything I, that you want to add? I don't. One of the one thing that when we were going toward the clamp um, on Bendy was uh, I had taken a couple CAD classes in college. I didn't know if I was up to kind of the challenge of What's three. What's CAD class? Is that a uh, CAD is computer aided design. It's it's what you see when when you design something on the computer, the models, the sketches. Uh, okay. What they do is when you take CAD, then you can send that to the manufacturer for them to cut you out a prototype. Um, so I had done all that. I had done CAD. I had done hand machining. I had done CNC machining. When you go to school for tech ed, you do a lot of that. So I, yeah. I knew how to do it. One of my questions was: Should I draw it up myself, or should I pay to have someone yeah. sketch that for me? Yeah. And one suggestion. It it uh, it's very fun to learn CAD when you're doing it for a project you have. Uh, CAD, SolidWorks, AutoCAD, they can be very daunting to learn when you're doing it just because you have to. But yeah. if you're doing it for a project, uh, it's a great time to learn CAD if you're trying to do a product design project. So, so where would you recommend people to learn? What's the best way to learn CAD if they want to design something to send it to <laughs> yeah. the manufacturer? I mean, my, my students, I, I go through, we do a, a unit, we have a, a 3D printer in our in our classroom. It was actually donated to us this semester, which we we're thrilled about. Um, that's a fun way to do it. Just get your hands dirty, open up the application, and go for it. Um, if, you're, if you're doing AutoCAD or SolidWorks, there are a lot of great tutorials online that will give you kind of the basics. If you know what you need your product to look like, um, you can just kind of go step by step. You, you Say you want to create a, a circular product, right? Yeah. Google, how do I create a circle in SolidWorks? And I, I'm, I'm a huge advocate of, if you don't know Google, um, it, it's, a, it's a, one of the best tools that we have, uh, walk you step by step through even something that's never been done before. So, I see, got it. Wow, okay, my, my brain is kind of filled up with, with the manufacturing and, and process and that's just, this is the, the beginning of... of yeah, and I remember when we started Bendy, I, I just... Uh, the, the first go around, I just could not believe how many steps there were, 
right? I mean, there's the prototyping, there's the funding. Once you get the funding, then you have to go find the people to make it. You have to get those people to send it to some shipping facility to ship it. And then you have to figure out where do they buy it from you and who do they pay and how, how do, it's a lot. And, and, uh, if, if you don't enjoy, uh, doing it, it's not going to be fun. If, if, if you want, if you're doing it to make money, don't do it. If you're doing it to have fun and, and show people that things can be done differently, um, and that you have a good idea, then then you'll have a great time at it. That's very interesting. So now the project's live. So, what kind of marketing have you been doing to promote your project? Uh, I, I've been talking to a lot of people, obviously uh, talking with you about it. But I've been anyone who I know who I've uh, met through Kickstarter, who I've asked questions about, companies I've consulted with, um, sending it out. In my case, to the first round of people who pledged on Bendy, uh, just letting them know that I'm starting a new project. Facebook, Twitter are huge. Um, sending emails in to Gadget Blogs. We had Gadget Sin and Gadget Mac cover Bendy again the second time around. Um, just getting kind of getting it in front of people's faces. Yeah. Uh, sending prototypes out to you know universities or or kind of interest groups that might broadcast it out to their their people and, and their group. Yeah. Um, that that's a great way. Providing tools, providing a Facebook like page, uh, getting getting kind of a website up for people to to land at after the Kickstarter. A project is done. I think is really important, so they feel like when Kickstarter is done, you're not abandoning them until your product arrives at the door. Oh, I noticed that you have your um, your own website called Is it Moonlight Studio? Yes, it's MoonlightStudio.com. So, what's your strategy there? Because I I see that when you have um, your description of the product, and then once that order, it goes to your Kickstarter page. Right. So 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 currently, I mean, the only way. To, to get the product is, is to pledge on Kickstarter. As soon as the Kickstarter campaign is over, um, what, what I plan on doing is, is instead of linking to the, the Kickstarter page, it would then link to you know, a, a shopping cart where they, it would then let the distributor know um, to, to ship one out. So they will be available, everything will be available through the website uh, if, if someone did miss the pre-order. But yeah, I, I think it's a great way to also help your backers know that, that it isn't only a Kickstarter uh, a project and that you you will be around for support and yeah. and among them after as well some credibility yes cool all right so um let's see so you haven't i mean you we we, we can't talk about project fulfillment yet but right. um uh, is there any plan that so so i see that you need to fulfill two different products yes but uh, let's see Let's see. Um, Sen I'm just looking at your project right now. So Senfire is going to be Very done soon. in five days. Yes. Right. And yes. How about Bendy? You still got like 30 days. Bendy is about 30 days out, and and Bendy will actually be a pretty easy fulfillment. Um, the we're I, we're on board. All the companies were ready to go. We're just kind of waiting for me to place that order, finalize a couple a couple details. Yeah. Um, and that shouldn't be too long after funding is out. Um, Zenfire. Uh, again, it, we're beginning of March. I, I, don't, I don't see any reason why um, orders shouldn't start arriving at people's doors by, by April, in, during end of April probably. Yeah. Um, but we're not too far out on Zenfire either. So once, once the Kickstarter funding goes through, uh, there's, a, there's a waiting period before those funds actually are distributed to you. Yeah. Uh, I think it's 14 days. It's two weeks, uh, yeah. Yeah. So well, once that's done on both projects, we'll be very close to placing those orders and getting those out to people. So, and and how do you set up your rewards? Do you do you do they include um, shipping to also? Yes, they do. They do. Um, and and with with both products, I'm I'm shipping. Uh, you know, I, I I will make some money on this. I, I think it's stupid to to try to when people try to say they're they're breaking even. I I, I this is definitely going to have some profit. Uh, yeah. However, this first time around, when when you go to Kickstarter, um, it, it's customary to make that profit margin very thin, um, because my my goal in this is not to to make money. Uh, really, it's to be able to fund another project and to be able to continue this project and get it up and going. And so this first order, the goal is to really get it out to people at a very low cost, um, get the made, get the mold, get the, the manufacturing process started, get that original order placed yeah. so that I can continue offering it even if it's not as discounted for, uh, for a close price. I see, I see. So that's, that, that's, that's great. Um, I mean, that's what Kickstarter is for, to get people started. Yep. Right? Yep. I, I, I absolutely love the website. I think it's great. It is, 
I would never have spent the money I have on on I mean on other people's projects, right? I would never have known about them at all. Yeah. And and kind of where I live is is a little bit isolated from you know the the bigger bigger cities design culture. Yeah. Um but but it's definitely something that I like to support even if I don't necessarily have the the funds to be the you know the two thousand dollar gold VIP backer on a lot of projects. I, I I do try to pledge my twenty or forty dollars where I can. Why? Why do I try to pledge, yeah, or why, why do you that? Why why is that? Well, I I, I mean there, I I don't pledge on projects that I don't like. By of any course, means. yeah. <laughs> um, but I think it's, it's some of these projects. I love supporting the idea that an individual can do it without a company. Um, companies have come out with great things. I mean, if you look at Apple, they are a an icon in in product design. But when when someone like the the guys behind the elevation dock yeah. can come out with a dock that just blows away what big companies produce, I absolutely love that. Um, and and I think that that supporting kind of these individual people who say it can be done differently um, is, is great. I see. And and can I ask you like how did you feel when you um, successfully funded your first project with Zenfire? Uh, oh, I was I was pretty ecstatic. Um, Zenfire it, it was funded pretty soon in the in the whole in the whole uh, the the run. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so it was very exciting. Um, I I realized I had a lot to do um, to get it going, but it, it it was it felt good. It felt good to to know that people agreed with what I thought was a good idea. Yeah. Um, and and I I can't wait for people to actually see it because it's. It's hard to capture something like that on video, especially. Uh, it's not too bad to take pictures of, but on video, it's really hard to capture the experience and the sound and and kind of the the feeling of the air yeah. um, around the whole thing. And and I just can't wait to get it out. Cool. All right. So um, that's uh, is so. Why don't you give us um the, your biggest takeaway right now? Because we're about to, to wrap up. So what was your biggest takeaway for people who want to start a project on Kickstarter? My my biggest takeaway for people um, is if, yeah, I, yeah I, right. I think I think it I can just kind of narrow it down to one yeah, and yeah. that if you have a good idea and and that's the the key is I, I've seen some projects on there where I I can't help but think uh, that they 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 thought of what can I do to to make a product and then thought of their product you you have to have a good idea and and I think if you do it comes naturally and, and it's something that you think of that doesn't exist already yeah. um, now that doesn't mean all of the things that you think are a good idea other people think are a good idea yes and certainly <laughs> I, mean, I am not immune to that by any means I had projects that failed and I, I don't think that's you know failure is, is used liberally and I, I don't think that it's necessarily a bad thing it just kinda keeps you in check like yeah. you did something wrong you know it's not bad but it was wrong yeah. um, and and if, but if you have a good idea, if you have something that's innovative, uh, I think that that's the key to any successful Kickstarter project. Cool. Yeah, that's. I got that. Good. Okay. Cool, man. <laughs> Thank you so much for everyone who's watching this. Go check out Eric's um, project, Send Fire, uh, or if you have an iPad or any actually um, any um, what do you call those tablet device. It yes. also works on yes. on Bendy, right? Anything with a flat back. Yep. And go check go go check out his product. It's really cool. Um, so if you, and also if you if you want even more resources to kick some serious butt on Kickstarter, come to kickstarterrockstar.com and sign up for email updates. Um, you don't want to miss it. And thank you so much for watching. And and I look forward to see you next time. Yeah, great to be with you. Thanks.